For more on what we can expect from today's hearing, let's bring in Bill George, Harvard Business Professor, former CEO of Medtronic. Bill, I don't know if you've had a chance to read her prepared testimony, but as Meg referenced, of course, she's going to give the uh, committee at least some insight into pharmaceutical pricing, talk about access. What's your take on how this goes? David, if uh, yesterday's hearing with John Stump of Wells Fargo is any indication, she's in for a rough time, and frankly, she deserves it. She has led with her chin on this, saying, you know, I'm in business to make money. Everyone knows that. Come on. And we don't make any money in the EpiPen. No one believes that. But she's really tried to obfuscate the issue by blaming the insurance companies, blaming everyone else, and taking away from the mainstream problem. She's got to reduce her prices. She's got to roll back her prices to where they were a year ago at least, which is like $450. I think she's got to apologize. See, she's in the generic business. They don't deal directly with consumers. EpiPen does deal directly with consumers, and she's got consumer outrage, and she's harming people. And when you do that, uh, people get upset, and the Senate gets upset. There is a report out also, David, on her compensation, where she's gone to net from $2.5 million to $19 million. But beyond that, my land has this, is top five executives the last five years have the second highest pay in the entire industry, only Regeneron's higher. They're, she's way above where Pfizer, uh, my, uh, and Merck, and all these companies are, Amway, Amgen, and they invent real drugs. Mylan's never invented a drug. And so I don't see how you can justify this. And I think she's got to apologize and get out in front of the issue instead of being on the defensive and trying to blame everyone else. Yeah, I mean, those price increases are hard not to look at and say, wow, look at that uh, over these last few years. Not the first time, by the way, this was something that many people were aware of, but it's interesting how it sort of took root uh, from the consumer level, Bill. But, um, you know, you're, you, you ran a device maker. I'm just curious. She seems to be going to some length here to explain, well, this is not just about a drug. It really is about the device and the complexity of the device. And people aren't taking that into account. Any any credence to that argument? Well, of course they're complex. Medtronic defibrillators are extraordinarily complex. We put in a policy when I joined the company in 1989, no price increases. We had to reduce our own costs internally. We had no price increases. Okay, we came out with models and more features that uh, more sophisticated that we charged more for at Medtronic. I'm not sure about the policies today, but I can tell you, you don't take advantage of the consumer with rapid price increases like they have because you're going to get pushback, and that's what she's done, because it's actually harming people. People aren't buying these pens, and their kidneys are going off to school, and they have anaphylactic shock, and they may die. And so I, I think she's got to be a lot more empathetic. She showed very little empathy here uh, for the consumer. And if I were the FDA, frankly, with Throckmorton sitting there, I would say we're going to rush generics to market. There's no the generic market, and then you'll see the prices start to plummet. And frankly, and that's, that's the best way to take care yeah. of it. That's really, Bill, where the, the cases are sort of combined with Wells Fargo and Mylan. Wells Fargo, not a case of life or death, but still, consumers are outraged. They got cheated, and that's why these CEOs are facing what is a very angry set of senators or congressmen. How do they, and women, how do they sort of own up to it? And how do they convey accountability and responsibility before these hearings. What's the tip? Because John Stump really seemed to stumble with that yesterday. Yeah, he did actually try to apologize. And I think you've got to get out in front of it. I think you say in, in John Stump case or in my last case, we're going to take the company apart top to bottom. We're going to change our procedures. We're going to make sure that we're doing the right thing by our customers. We're going to audit. We're going to do closed loop investigation. We're going to make absolutely certain that these kind of things never happen again. And frankly, we're not just blaming the people on the first line. We're going to take responsibility uh, at very high levels in this company, and we're going to claw back compensation, and we're going to do those kind of things. Same with Heather Brett, you know, and she's having to make any money. Ugh, come on, guys. She's making a lot of money, and so I think we have to deal with these issues to get out in front of them. If you're behind the eight ball with the Congress, you're in trouble. Uh, speaking of that, Bill, yesterday you could, you could sense the frustration from senators who are trying to rein in regulation, telling Stump, you are not helping uh, our cause, right? You're uniting the committee in ways that we haven't yeah. seen uh, testimony do in a long time. I just wonder, with Wells yesterday and Mylan today, if that wave of regulation is truly heading back. Yeah, I think that's a big concern. You're playing into a narrative here with the financial service institutions that we're not doing the right thing by people and they want to regulate, regulate. Same with the pharma companies. I tell you, you could bring on 
the quality companies could find price controls and other limitations on what they do. And I don't advocate for that for one minute. But I tell you, it could happen. And if people don't restrain themselves, it's going to hurt everyone. That's the impact that these events have, particularly in a political year where everything's in play. And that's my big concern right now is that the quality companies are being in the pharmaceutical industry and in the financial services industry are really being hurt by these examples. And uh, they're real life examples. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's a rough season out there. And I think people have got to get out in front of it and speak up. And the business community has been way too quiet about these things. I think they've got to get out in front and speak out on behalf of their customers and consumers in particular. Uh, Bill, final question real quick. Do you think Stump keeps his job? Uh, I don't know. I think it's 50-50 right now. Uh, I think unless John does some very aggressive things, maybe the board forms a special committee in this case that's gone that far and brings in a special investigator and really reforms the place top to bottom. This is a quality bank. By the way, they didn't make any money by opening an account one day and closing it the next, maybe a few dollars in fees. And I'm not opposed to cross-selling either uh, if you if you audit to make sure they're real accounts. They just put too much pressure on their people. And I've always thought that Wells Fargo, since my bank, one of the finest banks out there, and I'm as shocked as anyone right. that this happens. So, uh, and John's a quality guy. I had some empathy with him yesterday. So I think uh, the jury's out on that. All right. Bill George, as always, appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you.